Here's an original trainer YGM3. Uh, it's a reverb tremolo, single 12 inch from sometime in the 70s this one was made. They've actually uh, reissued this now. They obviously thought it was a great amp and they can sound fantastic. Some people do a few mods on them, they change the speakers, they change to do a few mods to the circuit, but even without that they are brilliant. Uh, very sturdy cabinet, solid made, trainers were solidly made, good transformers and everything. This one, as I say, has got tremolo and reverb. It has a bright switch, that so some people say it's too bright, but you can turn it off. And if you look at the back on, on these, it comes on wheels. It's not a bad size, actually. Uh, it's a solid back. So you got the speaker's not obvious, but the uh, bar across the back protects the valves. And there's a sticker inside telling you what valves are used. They're basically uh, AX7s and uh, two, well, they can be called the L84s or 6BQ5s, I believe they call them. There's sockets for switching off the tremolo and reverb. Foot switch is missing, but it'd be easier to make one up. To remove the amp chassis, unscrew the back plates, just help out these screws, and then the you remove these four big screws here which are screwed into the chassis itself but before we take it out you can see that uh, there's three valves at the front there's one around the back according to the the sticker down here it says they're all 12x 7a's and 6bq5's for these these are Phillips and you can see written at the top there, uh, 6BQ5. To get the chassis out, also you'll have to disconnect these wires to the speaker and to the reverb tank, which is inside the back here. Take the chassis out, put it on the top here, and then you can see uh, the Hammond mains transformer. It's got the part number everything written on the top. But a very small Hammond output uh, speaker transformer. On the uh, Bass Master 50 watt amp that I looked at, the YBA1 I think, the output transformer was huge. I mean as big as that, bigger than that for 50 watts. And this is like pretty tiny. Okay, it's only two uh, push-pull valves here. Probably only going to give about 10 watts, I guess. Uh, the three valves, I did look at this one earlier and noticed it's a ECC82 for some reason. The others are um, also a collection of different ones. There are two Philips ones, and this one at the back here is a, a Tionix. Uh, ECC83, which is also the equivalent of a AX7, a uh, British equivalent model type. And these are actually Philips, as you can see, uh, also called a 7025A, 12AX7A. So you've got three you can use 7025AX7s or ECC83s, all the same valve, really. So these two, I don't know if any of those were original and why that one's changed. Anyway, uh, typically uh, the on-off switch is on the back, that trainer you should do, which I thought is a pretty good idea. Actually, once it's on, you don't need to mess around, turn it on and off during the, during the use. Whereas we've got a standby on the front and the controls. So not much to see on top. Now inside, uh, on the as usual, trainer will give you a nice service uh, circuit diagram. Though being stuck inside with this one, it's very hard to see uh, if if you're trying to read it, if you're trying to fault find or anything. But a couple of interesting things to note are the date. Sep this is September '73, and. Down there's a revision that says October, a revision that says October 73, 
So we know that this was made around about after October 73. Um, as I say, I can't really look at the details, but I'm sure this one is available online as well. And then I'll just uh, notice I'm going to look inside the back. Now, this is just a, a massive number of screws. These long screws hold the back on. Why so many screws? Um, I'm sure they didn't need that many. And why fully enclosed? I read somewhere that they, these were used by a lot of hire companies, so they probably wanted to enclose the speaker to stop it getting damaged, but whether that's true or not, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the whole back I can take off. We'll look inside the speaker and the reverb tank. After removing the 20 very long screws that hold this back panel on, you can take it off and look inside. And it's still got the original speaker, apparently made by Marsden. Uh, it's a small horseshoe Alnico magnet. A lot of people say the speakers don't sound very good and change it to a more modern Celestian or something. Makes the amp sound a lot better and even uh, not having a solid enclosed back and cutting the hole or cutting the panel in half or something. Improves the sound, but never mind. This is all original and the um, Accutronics uh, spring reverb, a uh, long one inside this little padded bag try and keep it from uh, vibrations on the back of this it says uh, DWB4 and then 7372 I don't know if, if one of those is the date code or just the type taking the reverb tank out of its little pouch you can see it's an Accutronics and it's got the code there uh, which I can't decipher exactly right now, never mind. Inside, it's a two spring one. Another code there, 1253738. And it all looks good, nicely suspended. So that can go back in its pouch and be screwed back on the bottom. A quick initial look inside the chassis underneath, and it looks pretty much completely original except for we can see the mains cable now has a earth connection on the circuit diagram it shows it's just a two pin no earth but the death cap switchable here uh, to give you uh, minimized hum uh, one position or the other but for safety they now fit earths and then that's redundant even though it's left in but everything else looks original including these Malloroy capacitors big uh, paper cover things uh, can't made in Canada can't see the date 450 volt rated plus the sen can't see the capacity probably 40 microfarads he listed on the circuit diagram, uh, mustard, mother caps, good. Uh, look at these little uh, <laughs> coloured ones, uh, they're, they're nice. <laughs> um, everything else looks, and uh, the heater wiring is lifted away from the chassis, uh, <laughs> like that, uh, be near that metal plate which should be a so that's another way of doing it I guess it makes it keeps it away from the signal wires try and minimize hum uh, that's the typical wiring on the input socket they just have the two resistors just with a wire on the end no no insulation um, there's a bright switch capacitor there that will obviously bypasses just a just across the volume control when switched in or out. All the controls here are original. Um, the lamp, it says 125 volts, was obviously 
250 volts, but um, maybe they put a resistor in series with it. Uh, the diodes here, one, two, three, four, just arranged like in the bridge there. Whatever make they are, be on the circuit diagram. Um, and then everything else. It's pretty straightforward. I have seen people do a few mods to these. They take this capacitor off on the feedback to increase uh, the treble, I think, from the feedback from the speaker. And they do a couple of other mods. I don't know if it's worth it or not. So, that's the inside. Bit of rust. <laughs> we can go over the circuit diagram before we test it. Everything looks good. No swellings on the capacitors. Um, no other capacitors in here. I mean, that's normally you get the big round capacitors that stick through the chassis. Instead, they've gone for these uh, long ones. They must be sufficient. Now, this would probably be a bias here. And, um, yeah, bias will be off this diode smoothing capacitors. And some little bypass capacitors on the cathodes of the various valves. Uh, all pretty straightforward, nothing unusual. Um, another speaker, extension, and tremolo, and reverb sockets, which needs a, a two cables running off these put switch, which I don't have, but you can make one. There will only be connections to earth, no doubt, switching them on and off downloaded a copy of the circuit diagram that is stuck inside the cabinet uh, same date down here October 73 the original date was September 11 73 uh, the one stuck inside the cabinet this is um, crossed out and 240 volts written in otherwise I think everything else is the same there's a couple of things on this circuit diagram that aren't quite the same as in the amp, uh, but nothing significant. Well, this amp was reissued in about 2008. And I also managed to download the reissue circuit diagram dated August the 10th, 2008. It's interesting to see what they changed. They said they tried to reproduce it ex exactly. And then an initial, the uh, looking at these, they look the same. But I've just marked up a few small differences. There aren't many, and most of them are insignificant. Uh, they just moved that capacitor from there to there for some reason. I can't see how it make any difference at all, except it's on the other side. Of this circuit breaker uh, the bulb this this is the original circuit 73 the bulb was run off the high voltage through a resistor to there now they reverted back to just run it off the heater 6.3 volts on the 2008 one now although the transformer says 310 volts on both of them the actual voltages throughout the amp are different. This one says 400 volts off the rectifier and the high, high voltage line. This one only says 372 for some reason. They've had to change the capacitor values as modern ones are uh, being standardized to like 32 now. They probably can't get a 40 anymore. And it doesn't make really any difference. And throughout the amp, the uh, capacitor values, the electrolytics have changed slightly. Um, they did change this resistor from 470 ohms to 1K8, 1800. And su subsequently, these voltages were lower, 345, 268, it was 295 there. And also, there's a tiny value change here from 22K to 20K seems pretty insignificant that's a 68 microfarad because they don't make a 64 anymore uh, it doesn't make any difference things like that 10 microfarad instead of an 8 
looking at a few other things that have changed that actually make a difference the bright switch here on the original circuit the capacitor was a 0.001 they've now made it even smaller now only 330 picofarads you can see these cap values they don't mean anything uh, they did change the uh, tone control slightly from from a 0.01 they've lowered it to a 0.047 there anything else not really the voltage as i say um this says i think 235 on the original 255 all the voltages were higher on the original so virtually nothing really and in fact the only capacitors that may actually make any difference are these two here all these other things won't make a difference at all I will check this over the amp and uh, these capacitors in particular and uh, check in a few things make sure it's, everything is still good I mean, these these are all soldered connections and they 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 won't give any trouble the only things that will give trouble over time on some amps if there's connections on a a nut they can get corroded sometimes but these look all right um, nothing really now there are some modifications people do to this amp uh, for some reasons to, to change the uh, the frequency the treble and that mainly from what I can gather I will I will have a look at the notes he made a made a little list of some of the things that people change all the resistors capacitors uh, one of these things I mean most people tend to slow the tremolos down on modern amps they tend to use we tend to use slower speeds now you can normally do it by changing the capacitor values slightly making them a bit bigger um, some of these other things People talk about instability oscillations and all sorts of things which if it, if it occurs in here normally it's either a lead dress assuming the components are fine or as something very small this is an oscillation checking out the operation of the circuit to make sure everything's working properly I ramped up the voltage slowly just to make sure these capacitors which haven't been used for a long time were okay and they were uh, everything seems to be fine I haven't changed anything at all in the circuit it's exactly as it was made um, except uh, one of the valves was an ECC 82 it was in the phase splitter here and I have discovered by swapping it out for the AX7A that um, the gain with the AX7A is so high, you have to have the volume on virtually zero, otherwise it's just so loud. If you put the this valve back in, uh, the gain is a bit more manageable, and I thought it was actually better. But I've got the AX7 in at the moment. I didn't think it changed the sound at all. Um, I made up a foot pedal for switching reverb and tremolo on and off, and the tremolo is working. I'll show you in a minute. Um, speed and intensity are fine. The reverb, I haven't got the reverb tank attached at the moment because it's in the bottom of the speaker cabinet. I found the boost worked very well. It gives a lot of treble and mid-range mid boost, which I found was great. I don't know why people uh, don't like it. Um, but you have to be careful because looking at the circuit diagram, when you switch this in, the switch here, it passes all the high frequencies straight from the input pass the volume control and then if you've got the treble on high pass the treble all the way through and in fact makes the amp the treble be running like flat out uh, maximum volume uh, normally you'd have another padding resistor in here to try to prevent that a bit 
so the volume control could still limit the treble as well but that is why most people find it too bright because if you have the treble up as well it's just like running the thing flat out with all treble can be a bit piercing so if you switch this boost on it's best to have the treble at least turned down a bit to prevent all the treble going through and i'll show you again the bass has got a massive wide range now the other thing i noticed originally on the uh, original drawing is the voltage uh, now they specially said it was going to be 400 volts straight off the rectifier and the reissue uh, was stating lower 372 now uh, setting the input at 235 volts I've got um, a voltmeter on that point there and I've also got a voltmeter at the um, just to look at the voltage on the bias for the outputs just as uh, off off of there actually just to double check to so show you um, so I've got them connected I've I just turn it on up here uh, 235 volts about drawing quite a low current because the heaters aren't uh, very powerful in this amp which is all good you can see you've got negative about negative 17 you notice that the voltage goes up to 400 and over well over 420 until the valves start warming up we can see the voltage drops down to about just well over 400 which is 410 which is like the original circuit which this is so uh it's well within uh they were specifying a fine 400 so that's really good now with the um i changed the valve from the ecc82 to the ax7a in the phase splitter but it means you've got a, you only need to move the volume control a tiny bit to get maximum gain if you uh, change it back to this one you have a little more range and less sensitivity on the volume control turning on the you can get a bit of thump but maximum intensity shows up more at high speed and the speed doesn't go that low these days it goes low but it most people want a, a bit lower that can be modified and no other mods on this at all as I said people have suggested all sorts of modifications to capacitors resistors etc and they've also spoken about instability 47 picofarad across the phase inverter but this one's got 47 picofarad across the phase inverter so I don't know why some of them said they weren't didn't have any it's fairly normal for stability you lose a tiny bit of treble why shouldn't you even notice it so i just need to show you uh, a bit of sound as it warms up you lose a little bit of voltage still through 35 volts in i'll just show you uh, uh, quickly that it's working all right on treble pickup on the guitar <laughs> Normal, no, bo no boost, and the treble right down. Turn the treble, and that's with the bass up. Just turn the bass down, and the treble down. There's no volume at all, which is a bit weird. Turn the treble up. Add a bit of bass. Treble up. Now with the boost, turn the treble down, turn the treble boost on. 
I like that sound, it's, I find it good. And the bass strings are very percussive now. That's a treble pickup in between sound. Just briefly the uh, tremolo, the slowest speed that is, turn the speed up, intensity on full. Test the uh, reverb out when I get it reconnected. Quick test with its own speaker without the back on, but uh, just see what it sounds like. Um, I've got the uh, boost on treble at four, bass fully up, uh, the reverb's off, and the tremolo's off, obviously. <laughs> of the cabinet to seal the speaker in. I don't think it makes any difference. Let's just check out the trainer amp uh, with an external speaker instead of the one that's inside, see if it's any better. Uh, this speaker cabinet has a Fane and a Celestian speaker in parallel. And uh, although it's two speakers, you can see where the, the sound has improved over the single speaker in here. Uh, and then we go back to this one. So we've got the settings, uh, we've got the boost on, Ball, bass up max, treble about half, but we haven't got the um, tremolo or reverb on at the moment. A uh, nice clear sound on the bass. Sound. I think we'll probably get a better sound. 
speakers so the the amp is um, a very good sounding amp on its own uh, well, you've got the tremolo and uh, the reverb in the speaker disconnected that one all the controls are exactly the same <laughs> that one but it's okay I mean treble pick up speakers but I mean we could turn the volume up a bit so all in all I think the speaker that it comes with is fine I don't know why people change it as a combo I think it's pretty good. Uh, it's got a lot more volume available and uh, all the tone controls work. It's got the tremolo and the reverb. The reverb is um, could possibly be a bit better than what it is. 